Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, this is a bit of an impromptu uh, impromptu stream. I, I know it, I said I was going to stream today, but I had some computer issues and I was like almost, you know what? I'm just going to give up streaming today. Nothing's going to happen, but I managed to fi fix my computer problems. So dual booting Windows and Linux uh, can be problematic when using UEFI, UEFI booting. So hello everybody on the stream as well. So today, um, I actually had a plan to do something more specific. I wanted to do um, cross-account things with CDK, which sounds very cool. Uh, oh, hello, Marius, and hello, Mr. Gillick God. Um, why don't you use WSL2? WSL2 is good, um, but um, I use a proper Linux desktop as well, so for for a lot of different things. So it's not just a matter of having it with, within Windows. I, I, I'm i just a fan of running Linux. The problem with running Linux is not everything runs on Linux. So yeah, I kind of need to balance between the two. So w what I'm actually doing, I'm using Windows only for streaming, only for streaming and only for games. So um, most of my work is actually done on, the, on a Linux system. So... <sighs> Yeah, exactly. So that, I, I had the same problem, Kanir. I, I literally reinstalled my Linux setup, or actually upgraded my Linux setup, and it completely busted up my UEF, UEFI thing, drive, whatnot. So, uh, yeah, some issues on it, but um, nothing a little USB drive and some command line magic cannot fix, but it took me a while. So, um, anyway... Um, so the, the, the idea for today was that um, I was going to do some AWS CDK, but I was going to do something something fancy. I was going to do CDK in uh, actually doing CDK through deploying, uh, deploying um, stuff on AWS to multiple clouds using CDK, which um, currently is not supported. So um, that's something I found out. Uh, you can do it through CloudFormation. You can do it through... St to through stack sets, uh, but um, yeah, it's not possible through CDK. So I figured, you know what? Uh, let's just do, do CDK something. So if anybody has um, a suggestion, what should we sh what should we build using CDK? And uh, I'm not saying that I will be able to do it, but um, maybe we can do that uh, because I, I I did one stream a long time ago, well in March, and that seems like a, like a decade ago um, about CDK, but. Um, Maybe we can do something proper, right? Maybe we can do something else with CDK. Or if I have enough new audience, uh, I can do it here as well, right? Oh, I have a comment on YouTube from Marius um, saying you can do it using Pulumi. I think I can, yeah. I never use Pulumi, to be honest. Um, I, I know that Pulumi actually also has a similar approach like, uh, like CDK. It uses generic programming languages to do a lot of different things. So... Uh, I have not played with it, but um, I think at one point I will just do something with it as well. So, um, what do we build using CDK? Hmm. Let's do something. Uh, let's let's create. Let's go. Uh, so, a lot of people who use CDK use CDK for like building serverless applications. And that's a fair point, right? That that works pretty good. But let's do something more traditional. Let's actually create something like. Um, um, something like an auto scaling group so actually today uh and if there's any folks i guess marius you're from romania i mean your name sounds romanian uh, i was in this uh conference today and i was giving a keynote on it and i was talking about auto scaling and load balancing how important that is so um maybe i can do something about that maybe we can create an auto scaling group with a load balancer in front um uh, it's a more traditional approach but it's still important i guess um we can do that through cdk so um uh, i guess uh, let's do that. MKD, uh, let's call it CDK ASG load balancer. Now this is not going to be a like the the mega stream where I just spend hours on troubleshooting. I I should be relatively versed in CDK to do this, um, and um, so I I hope it's going to be all fine. So let's go here to the this directory. So if you have never created a CDK application before. Uh, oh, hello. Salut, Romania. I, I know a few words. I know a few bad words, Mr. Marius. So 
I used to go drinking and and well working with Romanians, so I know how it, how it is. So um, to create a CDK application, you create an empty directory and do CDK in it. Or oh, actually, first let, let's do this first. You need to install CDK. To install a CDK, you need npm or Node Package Manager. So npm, well actually, you need to sudo it. sudo uh, npm install dash g aws dash cdk. So this will actually install CDK globally on your laptop. So if I do this, of course, like ask for my password. Um, it's it's gonna do nothing here, right? Because I already have it installed. But if I didn't have it installed, um, it would well install it. So you'll see that it's uh, oh it's it has actually updated the package so that's fine that's even better. So uh, I just want to do something on my other screen as well. I just want to check something out mm -hmm. like that. Uh, maybe it opens. Maybe. Mm. Wow, really? Wait, 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 I think I crashed some something on my laptop. Ooh, don't die. Don't die. Come on. Okay, I think it survived. Ah, okay. Um, come on, open this. Yes, thank you very much. And this. Cool. So, um, let's, let's do a few things. Um, so... Create a CDK application, yes. CDK uh, init app and then dash dash language uh, equals equals uh, TypeScript. So this will um, initialize a CDK application um, that's going to be deployed using, well, that's going to be written using CDK. And uh, it creates all the scaffolding, all the files you need. It installs a lot of packages for you, the default ones that are required. And yeah. It, it should work right now. So right now you see here that I have a, or actually better like this, I have a whole bunch of files. I have my bin binary files, my libraries, my node modules, always uh, test files as well, a whole lot of different things as well. So, but but the, but the important file we're going to be working today is this file within the lib directory, and it's a CDK, basically the the project name .ts. So let's go at there and CDK something something this one yes. Cool. Um, this is a file basically where we will be writing all of our CDK logics, all the all the important things. Now, this is just a construct, right? And this construct is actually not launched through here, but it is launched through uh, this file called um, this one. So this file actually generates your stack uh, like this, right? It creates an application, and then within that application, it launches a stack. So it creates a stack. If I want to do multiple stacks, I can just paste multiple stacks here and it will basically create copies of the same stack here of course i have to do different names etc etc but it's it's possible like this so let's remove this uh, i'm not going to be playing around with that for now uh, but let's go here so what are we going to try to create so we need a few things um let's try to scaffold this uh we we need a vpc right so we need networking uh then later on we need um Security groups, right? Um, I guess security group because we need to set up permissions. Uh, we need uh, um, auto scaling group, and we need a load balancer, right? Cool. Um, is there anything else I need to do here? You know what? Permissions. Let's do some permissions as well because I want to do something uh, something with Systems Manager. So uh, I am or it's permissions. Cool. So um, let's then do this. So it's like this and where do we start? Let's start with the VPC because uh, VPC is kind of the base thing we need now if you've seen my previous streams on creating um, uh, cloud formation stuff or doing uh, things through cloud formation you've seen that um to do uh, to do it through um cloud formation create a vpc through a cloud formation cloud formation it's pretty complex so it's much easier to do it here but actually first um we need some modules so we need to do this uh, let me exit here and exit please 
Cool. Um, let's install some modules because we need a few modules to set up, basically to be used in our CDK product pro project. So let's npm install at AWS uh, uh, CDK slash AWS IAM. So we need IAM uh, again. AWS CDK. Uh, we need um, AWS uh, EC2 um, at AWS um, CDK slash AWS. What else? We need Elastic Load Balancing uh, V2. Now you may wonder how do you know which ones you need? Well, actually, let me show you. So if I go to here and I do AWS CDK Load Balancer, um, it's actually going to show me the modules here on the on the CDK documentation. So we'll see Elastic Load Balancing. I'm going to be using Elastic Load Balancing 2 because that's application load balancing. So I need this. I need, what do I need? Uh, I need auto scaling and is auto scaling a part of EC2? So if I go here, uh, da, 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 I th um, hmm, is there auto scaling groups? Auto scaling. Um, now, auto scaling is different from EC2 auto scaling. So that's what I want to make sure that this is the same thing. Um, yeah, okay, so we need to we need to do this. So this will actually, if I go here, uh, represents yeah, Chris auto scaling groups. Okay, perfect. So we need auto scaling as well. So back to here again at AWS CDK. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Come on, AWS auto scaling. Uh, what else do we need? Um, let me just go back to this thing. Auto scaling security groups are part of EC2. VPC is part of EC2. Permissions is part of IAM. Okay, I guess I guess we have all the modules we need. So if I do this, if I typed everything correctly, this should actually install all, I, all the things I need. Cool. Uh, install a bunch of packages, EC2, IAM, auto scaling, and elastic load balancing version two. Cool, now we can get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do right now is import these modules. So. We paste this we need to import one two three four four modules like that one of them is called uh, ec2 the other one is called what is it called i am and i am importing auto scaling right auto scaling and i will be doing a elb v2 like this so i'm importing these modules well actually we need to change these things also aws ec2 uh, AWS IAM. AWS auto scaling. AWS uh, elastic load balancing V2. Perfect. Cool. Okay. So now we have imported these, mod these modules and we can start using them now in creating stuff on, on, uh, on, um, on in, in CDK. So let's go with a VPC first. How do we create a VPC? Now, I must try something. This is, wait, ooh, I have a problem here. Wait, 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 wait. I see you have, a, I have something wrong. We may, we may trick people. So um, see, uh, what, how, how are we gonna call this stream? So it's gonna be um, uh, EC2 with um, AWS Cloud Develop. And good, cool. I want to make sure that I this seems okay as well, so I don't lie to people. Uh, how to center this? Center, I guess. Perfect. Cool. Uh, okay. So again, I'm doing this for um, TypeScript. If you do this in Java, if you do this in Python, if you do this in other languages, it's slightly different, right? Uh, at least the syntax is different, but uh, in the general, the general approach is the same. So you can use what I'm doing now, even if you plan to do CDK or if you're using using CDK in other languages as well. So let's create a VPC. So const, uh, let's call it my VPC because we only always have to put. Uh, let's not do, let's not do my. Let's do stream VPC. And then we're just going to do a new EC2. We're calling the module and then VPC. And then we just need to do uh, this, basically saying in which context this is going to be created in. And we're just going to do a VPC. 
that's it. Like this is the only thing you need to create a VPC in um, in CDK. Amazing. This is this is one of the things that sold me on CDK initially. Um, let's deal with um... <laughs> it's cheating. Yeah, it is. I know. This is literally this is this is God mode. <laughs> But it's, but it's worth it, trust me. Now, uh, let's create a permission. I will create an instance permission because I want to make sure that my instance uh, has the appropriate role to communicate with systems manager because I want to manage them through systems manager. So that's always a great thing to do. So um, I'm going to do const like this, uh, instance role, and I'm going to do new IAM role, right? There's going to be a role, I guess. Um, what do I need here? I need this this and it's going to be my or just i'm going to call it instance role like that and then i and here i actually need to define some properties like that now to check what i need to define if i can go here it says uh no sorry uh i need to go here on this side and say argument is not assignable property assumed by is missing so it requires the property assumed by and also if you're using some more advanced or actually uh, some different more mainstream text editor uh, like VS Code, you're going to get these things uh, hinting here as well. But if you want to have a look what you require, so if I go back to this and if I go to uh, blah, 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 find IAM. By the way, I haven't asked at the beginning, is the sound okay? Is my Am I loud enough? And is the music not too loud? Um, thank you, sir. Um, thank you. So here's the thing. I am in a role. So I create an I am role and the role, when you construct it, it requires, uh, no music. Oh, okay. Well, there should be some music. Maybe it's just very quiet. So, um, there's a few things that we need to define here, are the properties, here, are the construction properties we need for this role. And the only thing that's required, because the only thing that doesn't have a question mark next to it is assumed by. And this is basically an IAM principle, or this is a principle, for example, sns.amazonaws.com or uh, ec2.amazon.com. So this is something we need to, uh, what is this, um, basically, what is the IAM principle that's going to be using using this role? And we're going to be using EC2. So we're going to give EC2 permissions to assign, assume this role. So um, to do that, basically, it's an I principle. And um, it's, it's this object is created by a bunch of different things, but I know that I am has a thing to do that. So if I go here and create a assumed by, and I just do this new I am, and you search for service principle, well, bam, like that, um, close it. And then just EC2 dot, uh, uh, dot Amazon, AWS.com, close it. And that's it. Now we created an I am role. Now, this IROM is going to be a blank role. So one of the things I want to do, I, I want to add this to add to this IAM role is I want to add uh, a managed policy. And the managed policy I want to add is actually, oh, I need to log in. One moment. Am I typing my password um, in plain text? No. I hope I got it, but no. One second. You know, password manager, passwords are very complex and you want to spend time doing it right. And yeah, then you get them wrong. Cool. My camera is shaking more than usually. I don't know why. But okay, uh, let's go to IAM. So I, I want to I want to assign to this uh, instance a specific managed role because in order for my instance to communicate with systems manager, the only thing it requires is basically just um uh permissions to do that so if i go to roles sorry not not roles policies there is a systems manager um it's something something ssm ec2 role for ssm so i need to add this role to um to my um to my uh, im role basically add, add this policy to my im role now how to do this you can actually just basically uh because we already have an object called instance role so if i do instance role like that, I can, I can. If you do add and, and on a lot of lot of lot of different things on on 
CDK, you have an add method. So add um, manage policy. So I'm just basically doing this, add manage policy. Um, now, there's a bunch of things. You need to define a policy. You can either define a policy here, but uh, because this is a manage policy, again, I need to invoke the IAM module, then do manage policy um, from AWS manage policy name. Then I define service uh, dash role slash, uh, what is the name of this role? It's Amazon, let me zoom in a bit. Amazon EC2 role for SSM. Copy like that, and then just paste and do that. And I think I need a couple of brackets. Is this enough? Um, yeah, I think this is okay. So what did, it, what did we do here? So I've said, I have basically took my instance role that I already created here on line 14, uh, added a managed policy. And the policy is basically, um, you create a policy object by using the IAM managed policy from managed policy name method, which is coming from the IAM module. Now I'm, I'm not an expert in TypeScript by, by any means, right? But um, I've learned that this is how it works. So um, do not expect uh, massive pro tips for me, from me on, on, uh, on, 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 um, on TypeScript. So this will work, right? This will perfectly work now. Um, uh, I have basically created this role and I've added the managed policy to this role. My role is ready. Much more simpler to, to do this again than in CloudFormation. Okay, now uh, let's do a security group. I guess uh, we can do a security group here. So how does the security group look? Uh, let's find the documentation. So if we go here and search for security, um, will I be able to find it like this? No, I won't. Okay. AWS CDK security group. Excellent. So what do we need? Um, security group for security group ID. Um, wait, 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 let's go here. Under EC2. Yep, yeah, it's under EC2. So um, one of the things we have here is EC2, then there is security group. How to create the security group. Basically, you need a new security group, right? Uh, what, what are the most important things? We need to set up a VPC. Okay. Um, I think that would be fine, right? Perfect. So if we go back. So let's create a security group. So const, um, let's, call, uh, we need actually two security groups here, right? We need one security group for uh, the, between the instance and the load balancer. And we need one from the load balancer to the world. So let's do this. LB security group, or actually LBSG like that. Uh, it's going to be new EC2 security group. Um, this and then it's going to be called lbsg and then the properties here are just the following uh vpc right so i need to define the vpc and the vpc here is just stream vpc that's it um uh, one of the other features you can have here is you can just do allow outbound and you set this to true basically this will set up that the outbound rules are just working right so are allowed and if I do uh, just a description, there's also a description, and we should always do that. We can call this one um, um, load balancer. Perfect. Cool. Now, um, what are we gonna do here? We are gonna. We need to add some rules to this security group. So how? I guess. I guess it's a method. Uh, add ingress rule. Excellent. How do you add an ingress rule? Uh, we need peer connection description. What is a peer? Uh, how do you create a peer? So this, uh, what I've done right now, it only sets up outbound rules that are allowed, but the inbound rules are, I believe, are completely blocked. So uh, I would need to add some additional rules. So if I go here, LBSG and add 
ingress rule and the ingress rule will be a peer now what is a peer uh ingress rule for the and how could i how could i define a peer i'm looking at this thing so it should be ec2 dot peer right ec2 production new ec2 dot peer right is it peer peer yeah and then the method i can do any ipv4 like this right i think this will work maybe i don't know um yeah so this will basically create an any any ipv4 peer again it looks a bit complex new expression do we need to do or do i have to do do i have to have a new i don't have to have a new maybe like this okay that should work and the connection uh what is the connection here connection is connections no Sometimes you can get lost in, the, in this entire thing. So connection is as a port. So how does a port look like? Port is ec2.port. And port properties. Ugh, okay. Uh, protocol, protocol. See, it, it gets a bit uh, complex. So let's create something like... Uh, let's do a, Let's try to do this. So... Uh, const uh, HTTP port equals new uh, new EC2 port no what is it port yeah port and then what does this look like uh, the properties are what are the uh, pr uh, properties here so we do this and this and this and it's gonna be No, uh, there is not something like that. Uh, currently, nothing exists that you can ex ex uh, export an existing system to CDK. That would be cool. I mean, but I it it it, it takes some effort. I know, so it's not the best of things. So we need protocol. What does a protocol look? Hmm. Protocol and then uh, EC two dot protocol um, TCP. And then what is the other one? It's the string representation of the object. Okay, uh, then it's string representation. Okay, uh, port 80, I guess. It's just a string, nothing else, right? Okay. Uh, no, I'll do. So one of the things I can do right now here is I can any peer and then connection will be just port. HTTP port. Okay, this may work. Yeah, so uh, can you, you can yes, that's a, that's that's a point. Fair point. There's Cloudform, Cloudformer. It's actually a beta tool that's in beta since ever I joined AWS. But on top of that, there's also Former too. It was made by this lovely gentleman. Um, I always forget his name. He's a, he's a creator of that tool. Check out Former Tool. Former Tool can help you export your, your things into CloudFormation. So, and then maybe you can do some magic around that. It may be a bit simpler to do. Okay, cool. So we've created a security group here for. Uh, so it's going to be uh, load balancer SSG, and then this is basically just adding that port to this load balancer SSG. Create, let's create a new security group, and let's do const lbs, or actually uh, instance SSG, and this is going to be a new EC2 security group like that. Mm, again, the same thing. This uh, EC2, or actually instance SSG, and then some properties. What are the properties we need to do? VPC is stream VPC. Um, well, basically, I can do the same thing here. I can just do this, copy and paste. Um, tick, tick. Excellent. Uh, let's add something. Um, how can we do this? Let's const actually um, instance sg uh, instance sg add no, no 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 add ingress rule and then we need to do ec2 dot peer dot so how can we do this I need to so I, what I want to do right now is I want to assign 
um, the peer needs to be on sec the security group. So if I do peer, can I? What what can what can peer be? Any IPv address static static method. Oh, this is not good. Uh, maybe I can get peer from some different way. So what is iPeer? So interface iPeer is obtainable from peer, 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 peer. Hmm. Can I do this with prefix list? Oh, there you go. So try out uh, uh, try out former two. Uh, if it can do in, in CDK, that's amazing. But again, I think not everything is supported, so be careful what you do. Uh, um, God, I can do that. I can, I can, uh, I can do it. In uh, I can actually uh, do CIDR blocks here, but a CIDR block will not be good in this case because I want to. Ah, okay, so. I want to actually add a security group. So if you want to address as a connection partner by security, we can just secure, use the security group or the construct that contains the security group. Oh, oh, perfect. So I can do that. Uh, so instead of doing EC2 peer, I can just do uh, like this, LBSG, uh, LBSG, oh, LBSG, and then the connection is HTTP port. Perfect. Does this work? Seems like it does. Perfect. So basically I've defined here an ingress rule that says, hey, use a security, everything from a security group on port 80 will work here. So in essence, we're only allowing these instances to communicate with the load balancer through uh, port 80. So, and uh, the exposing to the internet, we're, we're gonna be exposing the load balancer itself. All right, so let's do, let's do an auto scaling group, so. Let's start. Let's see if we can do this uh, without looking at the docs. So, uh, const mm, ASG or um, stream ASG new uh, auto scaling. Um, what is going to be this? What shall we do? Auto scaling group. Okay, okay. Auto scaling group. Perfect. So what are the properties? Uh, we need the uh, scope. So it's going to be this, and then it's a string. It's going to be stream ASG, and then the properties. So let's see what properties do we need to define here. Um, I can just go here again and check. Uh, auto scaling group props, VPC, instance type, and machine image. Okay, so we need at least the VPC, which is stream VPC. We need a uh, machine type, oh sorry, uh, instance type, instance type, and instance type is, and we also need, what is it? We need machine image, so we need an AMI. Is it like that? No, it has to be lowercase, machine. Okay, wait, wait. So for instance type, I know, um, of a fact that you can get an instance type from the EC2. So it's not just a string, so you can do EC2 and then instance type, uh, you have to do of, and then basically uh, EC2 instance class, um, then you can do these things, right? You can select, uh, I will do T3 like that. I think this should work. And then instance size, instance, Size is gonna be what is gonna be is instance size uh, small or no not instance role instance size it's gonna be let's do small why not be frugal I think this works this should work if I do this come on whoa what's happening um, machine image is missing okay okay some missing properties right. Uh, so machine image, machine image. And it's also going to be new, uh, EC2. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I think you can, I can get the also Amazon Linux from here directly. And I just do this. Basically, this will get me my AMI for Amazon Linux. Easy. And that's a wrong thing here. Like that. Okay. Um, what is this? Stream ASG, 
Oh, it's not oh, stream VPC. Oops. Excellent. So this works. Now there's a few other things we can define for this for our, our, our auto scaling group. And actually, actually, let's go to auto scaling group here. Um, um, see, that's a good point. I'm not sure. So is this doing Amazon? Let's 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 see what options we have. Amazon Linux image. Uh, latest version on every. Is there something we can define here as a property? Um, is it, okay, there are some properties, so we can actually select what it does. I think by default it will do um, uh, it will do Amazon Linux one, but uh, let's try it. let's try it. uh, it's Amazon Linux image, and let's look at what, what are the properties here. So the props are this one. Um, we can do addition uh, generation. So yeah, we can do a bunch of different things here as well. So. Um, Standard, minimal, well, okay. Uh, I'm not sure that's gonna help help us here. Uh, generation, maybe, yes, this will help. Amazon Linux, Amazon Linux too. So yes, we can we can define also like this um, and do the following. So if we do generation, right? Uh, Amazon, it's actually, is it a string? No, it's actually EC2, Amazon, mm, on Linux generation dot two. There you go. Yeah, it, it sometimes think that, that this is very complex, but to be honest, this is very clear for me. I know what my options are. I know what I can choose. So it makes it relatively clear for me in these cases. Excellent. Uh, machine image is set. Now, one of the things that also I would like to set here as well is I would like to set the scaling or the, the auto scaling group size. So let's do that. Going to auto scaling, auto scaling group. Looking at the properties, where are the properties? Properties like that. Instance type we can do. For example, uh, there's some capacity. There's max capacity, max capacity, min capacity, and there's also desired capacity. Perfect. So let's say max capacity. Uh, oops. Um, like that. Is this okay? Yeah. Max capacity is going to be, let's say, 10. Min capacity is going to be 2. And desired capacity is going to be 3. Why not? Perfect. Um, also, what we could do, we can do a role. And just, I'm going to basically do this. So I've, to define a role for every instance that's being launched here, just do that. Excellent. Um, now, one more thing. The load balancer. So to do the load balancer, I guess it should be pretty simple. Uh, we can actually have a look here. What do we need to do for the load balancer? Uh, let's go to, where is it? Elastic load balancing version two. So, mm, overview. New application load balancer, this LB. Okay, we need VPC and internet facing that through. Okay, okay, that's the only thing we need to do. So, um, const uh, stream LB, and let's call this new ELB version two um, application load balancer, like that. And then let's do this stream stream LB. And the properties, the only properties we need is just a VPC. So if we do VPC and then just stream stream VPC, and then we do need to do what is the other thing? It's uh, internet facing. Yeah, internet facing. Internet facing. True. Uh, so this is the only, only thing we need to for, to create a load balancer. But also um, for this lo load balancer to work, we need to set up a few things. We need listeners and we need target groups. So. Um, I, I assume that there is a method to load balancer that we can actually add listeners. So if we look at, wait, 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 wait. So, uh, no. let's go to application load balancer. And the methods available here are, there we go, add listener, right? We can do add listener and there must be some way to do, um uh target groups right uh 
where do we ah okay there's an app there's a separate application target group yes it's an alb with target groups so let's start off with just doing first let's create a listener so let's go ahead and no go back please i want to see the documentation so add listener come on work please what's wrong uh, okay sorry i'm there so uh we need to do some properties for the listener we need to do what is the what's the require required thing we need to certificates target groups okay um okay uh let's do this let's go here and add a listener so we're gonna be doing const stream listener uh you'll be v2 um Actually, no. Um, stream load balancer because we're going to be adding it to this one. Add listener, and we're just going to give it a name called a listener. Why not? Or actually, no. Stream listener. Uh, the properties we need to set are what? What are we going to listen? We're going to have to define some properties, and those properties are basically going to be the ports we're going to be using. So uh, I can do port. Uh, sorry, protocol. Right is it no port yes i'm going to port 80 because it's going to just use a number i believe the port is just a number yeah it's not an object and then i'm going to do open i'm going to say it's true so if we look at open it's a basic boolean we're allowing anybody to connect to this listener which is fine cool so this is fine is it what did i do Stream listener is declared. That's fine. What a new expression whose target lacks a construct. Oh, not new. Sorry. We just need to do this. Sorry. Blah. Cool. Um, and then now, if once we have a listener, actually, what, one of the things we can do here, if we go to listener, so it returns an application listener. Now, the application listener, one of the things you can do is we can add the targets. So, by running this thing called add targets, um, we will be adding targets to our listener. Um, what, are the, what what things do we need to define here? Are there anything? We can basically just do some ports. Um, we can do targets, and basically the uh, the targets will will be an auto scaling group, and uh, yeah, and protocols, right? Port protocol, and it's an application protocol. What is an ap application protocol? It's an enum that's just is gotten from here okay that's fine so let's do that so um let's actually take this stream listener and add targets and to add targets we need to give them i guess what is the first thing uh we need to give it an id it's going to be web servers and then a bunch of properties now in these properties what did we say we need to do port right port and port here is going to be 80 because I'm going to have port 80 listening on my EC2 instances. Uh, protocol protocol needs to be a special enum. And that enum is actually this one. So it's coming from Elastic Load Balancing V2 and it's application protocol. So one of the things I can do is I can do ELB V2. Um, what is the name of the application protocol dot HTTP. And targets, I'm just going to do you have to do it's actually a um if you look at targets the targets um property is an array so i need to do this and one of the things what's my uh stream asg yes that's the thing awesome perfect now this i mean looks like good code now i think one of the thing we are missing one thing here because what's going to happen here once I launch this? Does anybody, can anybody care to guess? Well, I just have a look at something else. Uh, no, submits are going to be actually def defined by default because um, it's just great. Um, <laughs> it's just great. Uh, creating vpcs um in with this and it's gonna do that all automatically so we don't have to worry about anything like that um 
we need to define yeah cheating i know we need to define we need to configure our ec2 instances because our instance is going to just bring themselves up right they're going to just start up and nothing and they will not serve any web traffic they have no web server installed them i'm not using a custom ami so we need to configure ec2 instances and how does one configure an ec2 instance um, in an auto scaling group does anybody have experience with that user data exactly so we need to set up some user data and um one of the great things about uh, about um, cdk is because it's using um, generic programming languages you can do some generic programming language things such as um uh, how do you set ssh keys etc so you can set ssh keys through the instance configuration if i want to do here i think it's set up here where is it so if i would be doing i think there's a key something here so if i do key key name right is there a key name thing yeah so i can do key name i can basically specify a key name on my instances but i'm not going to do that and you'll see why so i need to use user data and user data is um, executable code that needs to be a file a shell script that's going to run on my instance only the first time it runs so um, how to set user data and again thanks to cdk because it's a generic programming programming language we can actually use TypeScript's or JavaScript's abilities to read things off disk. So if I do, um, like let's let's add um, FS access. Well, it's not necessarily cloud init, but yeah, it, it's in essence cloud init. Yeah, I'm not doing the entire cloud formation um, cloud formation thing. Where when you do it with cloud formation, you can actually set up those signals and whatnot. But in essence, cloud init will do that. So import. I'm gonna do this. Uh, where is it? Import a star from a star as fs from fs uh, from fs so i'm importing fs or this is the file system module of typescript which in essence gives me the ability to read files off disk so now let's create that file off, the, off on disk so mkdir and let's create a folder called assets and gonna edit the file here edit assets and it's going to call user underscore data dot uh, data dot sh so to create a script we just need to do yum y inst uh, update right we just basically add commands which are going to be executed during my instance launch yum y update uh, yum y install httpd and service httpd oh it's been one hour well httpd start is this how you do service or service starts HTTPD? I don't remember. <laughs> um, I think I have a script somewhere. Wait a second. Give me, give me a moment. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Ah, it's service. Uh, HTTPD start yes well it's not system ctl it's actually uh, well it is but it's wrapping it in, uh, in service but that's fine that's fine um so let's go back service http start this should be fine so basically this script will update uh, the packages uh, install httpd and just ex run it and uh, run, run apache so if i save this and go back let's actually add this thing to my uh to my auto scanning group so Let's do this and user data like that. And let's go, let's actually create a, 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 a basically a variable that's gonna contain this this uh, this data. So if I do var boot script, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a string because this is a typed language. The only thing we need to do now boot script is we need to read stuff off disk. So to do this fs uh, we're gonna do read something read file is it read file uh asynchronous read the entire contents of a file but we need, don't want to asynchronous we need to do sync sync because if we do it asynchronously we might not get it so let's do that file read sync and then just uh read uh file read file sync yes and then it's going to be just assets slash user data sh and that's all so this loads that user data script into uh type buffer is not assignable what 
stream. Is this a buffer? Oh, ooh, 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 I remember. I remember now. Aha, this this bothered me the last time. UTF-8. You need to convert it to UTF-8. And what bam. Now, uh, uh, one other thing we need to do here is basically um, we need to add uh, add the user data to our auto scaling group. So if I do uh, stream ASG, there's a method called add user data, and it's basically a string which is boot script. That's it. Perfect. Um, yeah. This looks fine. I think we should be good to go. Uh, so let's let, let me just review this. We are creating an auto scaling group behind the load balancer in a separate VPC. At that instance, is going to be um, managed managed through Systems Manager. So what we needed to create here is a permission for a role. Uh, we added a specific managed policy to that role. This is our cheating VPC. <laughs> we created a security group. Uh, actually create a port and then a security group for our load balancer added rules here a security group for our um, EC2 instances that are connected basically between the load balancer and the instance then we created an uh, auto scaling instance here uh, instance type machine image generation max capacity min capacity desired capacity and we attached our role to configure those instances we have used a uh, boot script uh, or a user data script which we read off a file and that user data script is this um it's not this it's this <laughs> and then finally we've attached this thing to our instance and we have a load balancer that has a listener on port 80 and we've added targets to that listener called web server and basically all the targets are from an auto scaling group so now if i do this and do npm install oh, sorry actually, npm run build npm run build will actually compile typescript into javascript because that's something you need to do. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this works. It works. Perfect. Now let's try CDK deploy. CDK, or actually CDK deploy, we can do CDK synth. If we do CDK synth, it's gonna generate a CloudFormation template. Um, and that's a CloudFormation template. Uh, that's a lot of CloudFormation, let's do this. Um, temp file or a TMP file like that. I'm gonna output the synth file to a temp file, or actually, desired capacity. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so uh, if I would do cat temp file, and let's count how many lines of cloud formation did we generate. So we've we've created eighty one lines of uh, CDK, right? And how many lines did that create of come on of cloud formation code? 573 lines of confirmation code. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, okay, that's not fair because there's a lot of different things here. It's multi-region compatible, a whole lot of different things. So, it's not just the, that. But let's do this. CDK deploy. This looks good. Let me just zoom out a bit to see what's happening here. Uh, so it's actually telling me, hey, these IAM roles and statements are going to be changed. These are the security groups that are going to be added. Security groups. Security groups. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I made a problem. Well, actually, I made, I made a boo-boo. So I've created a security group, but I have not attached a security group anywhere. Anywhere. So let's do this again. Stream. I know that you have to attach a security group. There's a method on the auto scaling group. So if add security group like that. And the security group is instance security group like that. Oh, no. What, what did I do? Also, we need to attach a security group to our load balancer. So let's do that. Uh, stream LP. It's add. Hmm, how do you do add a security group to a suit to a load balancer? That is something I don't know. Application load balancer. Is it on a target group? It's a, it's on a target group, yes. Is it there? Yeah. 
listener, listener, somewhere. Interesting. Uh, let me have a look. I'm not sure really where do you add your security groups to a load balancer. Uh, yeah, you can search it, but I really want to just see how it's done from the actual database side because I know that on a load balancer you can add um, a security group here. Um, so it's on a listener, on the listener. Yeah, there you go. So uh, let me have a look here. So we need to add a security group to the listener. Uh, is it there? Are you sure? That this is a security group on a listener or maybe i'm just confusing things wait 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 that's the thing i don't know so i may be confusing application load balancers and ah no it's it's actually okay 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 it is it is part of a load balancer so let's see how that's done so application load balancer oh, application load balancer is there a property network load balance not network load balancer sorry wait 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 application load balancer come on i have a horrible trackpad on this laptop and i i cannot connect my mouse to it for some reason so uh okay security group ah, there we go so there's actually no method to this one so we can do this and then security group and this is lbsg like that perfect okay excellent i think this should be working now so uh, again npm run build excellent cdk deploy um i want to do one, one more thing so Bear with me. I am a fan of doing outputs. So when you create something on CDK, you create an output. An output is basically a CloudFormation output that will show you um, something, right? It will show you uh, a DNS name, an IP address, or something you, you require f uh, right then and there. So uh, to create that, you can actually uh, use the following. So uh, let me do this. Outputs, just so it's much more cleaner. And let's do like this new CDK. It's part of the big uh, module CDK CFN output. And then basically do this. And then we're going to call this uh, LB DNS. And then the value of this thing is going to be something from the load balancer. If I do LB, uh, no, uh, stream LB, and there must be something out of it that's going to be uh, IP. Hmm. No. Uh, wait, 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 wait. There may, must be something uh, out of a load balancer that throws out an IP address or a DNS. It's a method. What does it actually return? Stream LB. Ah, okay. Load balancer DNS name. There we go. That's something I want. Uh, so this is basically going to throw out uh, uh, a load balancer DNS name at the end. And you'll see how that works once I, once I build this again or once I deploy it. Cool. CDK deploy. And I'm fine with this. Nothing has changed from that perspective. So it's good. Now this is gonna take a while. It has 37, it has 37 resources to launch. So it might take a while. And actually let's have a look at uh, at the AWS console to see how, how all of that is, is behaving right now. CloudFormation. See, there we go. Perfect. So a whole bunch of things are being created. And if you look at the template, the template is wow. So uh, it's just a massive, 
complex template full of intrinsic functions. All those things are handled by CDK from you. So, you know, when we say it's cheating, yeah, it, it kind of is. <laughs> because, for example, it does all the user data for you here as well. Uh, and it does like your entire VPC setting here from, um, from yeah. I would like if you have never worked with any infrastructure as code tool out there and you want to get started right now, uh, CDK is definitely a great way, especially if you have some knowledge in Python or JavaScript or something. Definitely an easier way to get started because it kind of abstracts a whole lot of things for you. Now, CloudFormation is the big boy behind it, right? You need to have CloudFormation. But uh, for most use cases, just doing CDK would be sufficient. And, and for example, even if something is not supported natively in CDK, like you cannot, there are still some things you cannot do in CDK compared to CloudFormation. CloudFrom, it, um, CDK contains, um, um, CDK contains actually CloudFormation, uh, where I, I want to show you, CloudFormation resources, right? So if you want to do some specific like Elastic IPs, or I mean, I think it's supported in this, but you can actually do the exact same properties or uh, configuration of a, a resource in CDK with the same properties from CloudFormation, if that makes sense, right? So, uh, for let me give you an example, uh, a VPC. Uh, VPC uh, on on uh, on this thing requires basically. Let me show you VPC. No, no. A VPC is exactly level one constructs, right? So VPC contains like CIDR. That's the only important property that you need. Everything else is not not well. Actually, no property is important, right? You can do it. Will do a lot of defaults. But if you set up CIC, CIDR like this in 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 a in a CDK constru construct. But if you use a cloud formation construct or a level one construct here uh, for VPC, you will see that it uses different properties. It's a, it's a different property. It's called CIDR block. It's differently named and it uses the exact same properties you would have on cloud formation, right? A exact these properties that you have on cloud formation. And what's, what's uh, different about it, that if you create a VPC like this, just using cloud formation uh, uh, construct, it will create just a VPC, nothing else. It won't do subnets, it won't do gateways, it won't do anything. So you would need to define basically the same things as well. So, uh, but they exist here, so you can use them as well. And uh, But most people don't use those things, at least in my experience. Uh, unless you really have to do, ooh, whoa, something's bad. What did I do? Uh, okay. Delete, 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 delete. okay. Invalid malware was specify both ports uh, with TCP UDCP range. So uh, must specify both from and two ports with TCP UDP for port range. Port range. Wait, what? Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's see what we do. What did we do? So uh, it's a security group for. Uh, load balancer. So LBSG, EC2 peer, any IPv4, right? Is that the one we've done? Yeah. Um, wait, wait, wait. I need to find what is this? LBSG. Invalid must specify both from and two ports with TCP UDP for port range. I'm not using port range anywhere. Maybe this protocol is, um, you know what? Let's do this. Um, any IPv4. And then one of the things I can do here is I can actually do this. EC2 dot port, I believe is a port. And then you can do mm, TCP. And then you can define an actual port like that. Um, I can do this. Uh, like that. Maybe that fixes it. And then on this other side, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, instead of doing this, I'm going to do EC2 
port uh, TCP and then I'm gonna do 80. It must, it may be because my port declaration um, up here is not good. Port, oh, sorry, not string. So it must be something wrong with this thing. Uh, and I need to define what this is. Protocol TCP and string representation. I, I really don't know how this works. Um, never used it before. So um, let me do this. And do this, and do this, and do, what did I do? Like that, and then that, and then that, and then that. Okay. Back to the drawing board. Um, and I promise this is not going to be a long stream, so I'm going to finish this and it's going to work. <laughs> Let me just wait for this to delete. Also, um, uh, a shameless plug. Tomorrow at um, 11, 11, I think. Yes, 11, 11, 11 a.m. Uh, Central European time, uh, which is well, it's 7.29. So tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., there's another session of Itibis been streaming with my friend Kobus and myself. We're going to be streaming live on the AWS Twitch channel. So it's twitch.tv slash AWS. And we're going to also be doing some CDK stuff. So if you're interested for more, do join us tomorrow morning. And when Kobus and I do stuff, it's basically just, you know, throwing, 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 what's the name? Uh, shooting wind or shooting shit. Yeah, one of those. CDK deploy. Yeah, bean streaming is um, it's uh, no beer. It's basically just us drinking coffee, like coffee beans. Kobus is a dad, so he has a lot of dad jokes. So I guess it comes from that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we just drink coffee in the morning and do tech and talk tech. So it's it's a uh, it's a uh, we have a Monday morning tech talk and a Friday morning tech talk. So uh, we try to reach everybody uh, everywhere. So <laughs> you're welcome to join. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's just a very much relaxed way of doing a stream so and it's and it's and it's great because i have him to talk to and we get a lot of people and, and it's a it's a more interesting so my stream is very small i very much appreciate my streaming on it because i have a few people uh, like yourselves that come here on most of my streams and i can kind of discuss it with you but on the database stream there's like much more people so there's much more questions and people you know, jumping in chat so it, it's always fun one day when my stream go, grows even bigger i'm gonna have more people on my stream but you are the ogs of my stream uh off topic do you use Streamyard? yes so mr t s g t green we use Streamyard for uh, those things so right now this is not Streamyard. this is my obs setup at home and it's sufficiently it's it's perfectly fine for my requirements because uh i don't usually get people on my streams and uh i like my control with my obs StreamYard is amazing if you want to do like multi-people streaming. It just works perfectly, right? And uh, you don't need a, a beefy PC. So yeah. Doesn't AWS have a new live stream product? Yes, we do. But it's, to be honest, I've never used it. It's pretty expensive. Um, it's more intended for like enterprises. And to be honest, I'm still trying to figure out what is that uh, IVS thing it, um, intended for. Because uh, it's basically Twitch but it's like self-hosted Twitch or something like that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, right? It's not like a it's not like a product for you to stream to some other platform. So yeah, it's a specific self-host or self self-contained uh, streaming product. So yeah, I, I have not had a look, have, haven't had a had had a chance to look into it too too too, too much. So yeah. But also regarding uh, bean streaming and, and beer, um, Kobus and I actually plan to do from time to time also like a Friday evening stream as well, um, because w we reach a different audience then. So uh, the folks who come on a Friday evening are folks who like to hear us drink and, and talk those kind of things. And also we catch a lot of the US audience. So in the mornings, there's nobody from the US. It's basically Europe, uh, Asia, um, and uh, even some folks from uh, from Australia. So, oh, and also a lot of folks from India, which are, which are the best folks. <laughs> Always a lot of great questions from, from people from India. So, love that. Well, on Africa, absolutely, right? And today we had a Africa... So every Thursday, there's an Africa office hours because Kobus, my friend, he, he covers the Africa region. So he has a specific office hours for Africa. And there's a lot of folks who come from uh, Africa to that stream to ask questions. So, also cool. 
Okay, this looks okay so far. <laughs> uh, I understand you're based in Berlin. Do you work in any way in DPP? What, what does DPP mean? I'm, I'm not sure. Yes, I'm based in Berlin, uh, but what does DPP mean? No, I don't. I actually, I know folks who do. Uh, I have a few colleagues that actually moved to that platform, but um, uh, I, I, I don't. Uh, they're, they were based in the same office as I was, but um, no, no. It's a big thing. Like the AWS Volkswagen partnership is, is, is massive, right? We're working together with them uh, for a lot, on a lot of very, um, what would be the proper term, uh, very exciting stuff. Now, what are the details? I don't really know exactly. It's a, it's a kind of a separate part uh, of what I do. But uh, it's it's really cool. So okay, cool. Uh, it's succeeded. And one of the things we have here. Oh, you're the Volkswagen side. Oh, well, hello. Uh, yeah, very cool. Yeah. Are you were you in our office or um, were you doing? Were you a part of that? Um, so one of the things we got right now is we've got. <laughs> if I could teach something there, I'm very much open to teach folks. Uh, if you guys want to learn something from AWS, just let me know. Hit me up, and I'm I'm always happy to spread my knowledge, um, like the plague, like like COVID. So um, we got this URL now. If this might not work out of the box because we still our instances still need to be um, booted up. So if I do HTTP and HTTP and then HTTP like this, let's see if this works. Oh wow, it, it works out of the box. I'm I'm surprised. So if I do this paste. Oh we run Apache. There we go. So basically what we did right now is we've we've launched an auto scaling group with I believe it has three or two instances, right? Ah, okay. So you are in the same office. Okay, yeah, you're in Bert 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 13, 13, right? In that office. Um that's very cool. Yeah, but with Corona, I haven't been in the office since, I think, April. I haven't been into the office, so there we go. Um, auto scaling groups. There we go. This is the new CDK auto scaling group. It has a current capacity of three. And if we look at the instance management part, we said we have two, uh, three P3 small instances that are basically serving our content through our load balancer. And the load balancer is this one that basically has a listener port 80 that does things um, to these instances. There we go. Doing. It's currently stated as unhealthy for some reason, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what my health check is set up to be. I think it's just a, yeah, just slash. I don't know, it's eventual consistency. So, but we've achieved what we have achieved what we wanted. So we've created a load balancer. Uh, we created an all scaling group. We've created a bunch of, oh yes, one more thing I wanna check. So um, uh, the reason I did it, uh, uh, a special, uh, special IM role for my instance, uh, so I can do systems manager. So if I go to systems manager and I go to manage the instances and hopefully these instances will be managed under yes they are so if i take this uh, copy link address like that and if i do aws ssm start uh, session target and i just do this will this no 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 wait 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 copy like that is target the correct thing ah Plugin not installed. Oh well, uh, I was hoping I, I was going to be able to do it through my command line, but I can do it like this. Um, start a CDK thing like this. Start session, and well, bam! If I do this, you see that I am connected to this instance through uh, session manager. So, Mr. Gilly God, you asked me before. Uh, why don't I add a key or how do I add a key? Well, I don't have to add a key at all because I can access my instance 
through systems manager so if i want to do anything on this instance um any manual intervention and hopefully i don't have to do that because this is an auto scaling group anything i do is going to be lost um i can actually do it through this thing awesome uh cool i think we can slowly wrap up wrap up here so if you guys are interested in this code um i've actually done the same thing a while back um it's on my code shots uh on my code shots git repository so if let me actually find this on the other side so i can paste the thing so git 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 where are you git github code shots by the way the code shots thing i do is like a short series of videos where i discuss just some code it's it's like a 10 to 15 minute videos where i just look at some code or make some it's usually cdk or cloud formation so uh, i have uh, currently i only have three three videos so uh, but if you are interested it's there so uh, i've sent the link and it's in in this, in this repository under cdk ec2 asg user data i think it's a bit different it's slightly different because i don't have a security group there for uh the load balancer i believe it's it's i don't i think i'm not sure if this one proper is set up properly but most of it's there i'm gonna fix it up later on so just so you know if you are interested in in, in, in the code uh, excellent uh once again thank you all very much for attending it has been pretty fun to do this um yeah and i will be seeing you if you come tomorrow morning 11 11 a.m central european time if you come to the twitch.tv slash AWS, I'm going to be there with my colleague Kobus. But if not, I will be seeing you next Tuesday again for the same type of stream. I'm not sure what is going to happen. What are we going to do? I need to find a neat technology to talk about. And hopefully I don't break my computer <laughs> in the meanwhile. So thank you once again, guys. Uh, I really appreciate your support and your, your coming to stream and your all of your comments. Um, it's always fun to discuss it with, with, with the community. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.